Hey everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to the next build in my video series. And we're going to be doing the Estes Mean Machine and I had to angle it in such a way as to fit the whole box in the screen. When this thing is complete, it's going to be over six feet tall. So this will be by far my tallest rocket in my fleet. And in addition to the stock kit, which I'm going to open up here in a second, I want to also open up a couple accessory items that we're going to implement in the build. Uh, first of all, I've got the uh, 24 millimeter engine retainer set that I want to do. The standard kit comes with a, a regular Estes hook, but I prefer, and I've done this on my High Flyer XL, I prefer the retainer set. So we're going to implement this in lieu of the hook. So we'll get to that when we build the motor mount. But I also want to include a baffle. I got this from Rocketarium. If you remember, I installed one of these in my uh, Rocketarium VK6 uh, rockets that I built recently. And there are basically, in an essence, there's, there's four body tubes to this kit. Two of them get glued together, the other two get glued together, and then where the middle point is, there's a interchangeable like adapter where you can twist them on and off. But one of the coupler links I want to replace with a baffle. Uh, I'm really impressed with the way it worked on that Rocketarium kit. It eliminates the need for wadding, although I may still put one or two pieces in there, but it really does help protect the parachute. And I've gone through my share of parachutes like I'm sure anybody has who's flown for a while. So those are the two additional items I'm going to use in the build. But let's go ahead and crack this kit open. As you can see in the picture, there is a center point here separating the white from the blue. And that's where that joint is that it will break apart. And I was thinking, yeah, you can see there in that little picture, it shows how it breaks apart, which is gonna help out with the storage. Now, one thing I have not yet decided on is the baffle, whether I wanna put it in the bottom coupler or the upper coupler. If I put it in the bottom, then my shock cord is going to be mounted and that's going to make separating it a little bit harder. So more than likely, I'm going to use it in the upper portion as the coupler. But like I said, well, we've got some time yet to get to that. But let's go ahead and get this open and do a quick inventory. Make sure everything is there that's supposed to be. And you may be thinking, wow, well, Kevin, you've got that Zephyr high power rocket. You're correct, but even though this is still bigger than that rocket, <laughs> it's amazing how tall this thing is. So let's just go ahead and slide everything out of the bag. Set the bag aside. Let's get the four tubes aside and out of the way. And we'll do a quick inventory. Nice balsa fins. So it looks like this bag is sealed also, so let me... All right. Okay. All right, quick inventory. I see an engine mount tube. A, there we go right there. B is the green engine block. That's going to be... I'm not going to open this up yet, but I can see the green engine block in this bag here. Uh, the engine hook, it's there, but again, we're not going to use it. The laser cut centering rings, I see them here in the bag, kind of tucked in behind the shock cord mount, which we're not going to use that shock cord mount either. We're going to use the eye hook that's on the baffle. Uh, then we've got the four main tubes. They're all right here. Equal length, I'm guessing about 18 inch. Yeah, these are 18 inch BT60 tubes. Oops, sorry. Bump the camera there. Uh, then we've got the nose cone. And you know me, I'm gonna end up burrowing all that open and uh, so we can mount all of our electronics up in the nose. Uh, then let's see, then we've got our Oh, our two couplers. Let's get these out. I'm intrigued a little bit about this. I've never used this system before. 
Let's see. Okay, so that fits in and then locks. Oh, okay, that's, hey, that's pretty solid actually. Okay, and then you just twist and pull apart. Awesome. That didn't feel chintzy or you know, real cheap. That felt solid and, and durable. So that's good. So we got both, both of those. It comes with a parachute, comes with a shock cord, which I'm gonna replace with a tether cord, as well as some newer fabric style elastic. Uh, then we've got our laser cut wood sheet. Those are our fins. Should have four fins on there. There they are. That looks to be about uh, 3 16 inch. I don't think that's eighth inch, maybe eighth inch, but more likely three sixteenths. Uh, again, the shock cord mount, we're not gonna use it. Uh, two red couplers, these are the two couplers that we're gonna use to glue the tubes, but one of these will re be replaced with the baffle, which is good, because then it allows me a, a spare for future rebuilds. If you've seen my videos long enough, you know I've had to use those a time or two. Then we've got the yellow spacer tube right here. Uh, the launch lug, I see the launch lug inside. Now that's going to be a 3 16 um, diameter. <laughs> My mind went blank for a second there. Then we've got the engine spacer. This is if we're going to run a D motor. If you run an E motor, you don't use it, but with a D, you got to have that spacer in there to make up the difference. And then a black engine hook retainer ring. Uh, again, that's an item we won't be using because we'll be using the retainer set. So that's it for the inventory. So that takes care of everything. We've got everything we need. Uh, I didn't see the decals yet. I'm anxious to see what they look like. Let's see. The mean machine. Those are some mean looking teeth there. <laughs> so that'll spice it up a bit. All right, so with that, Let's go ahead and clear off the bench and let's get started in step one, which will be preparing the fins. Okay, before we start with step one, I actually want to get the baffle built and glued up so it can start setting while we continue the rest of the build. So because this is not part of the, the main instruction manual, I just want to get this kind of out of the way. Uh, if you remember, I did this very same build on the Rocketarium, uh, the VK7 kit that I built. And I think I misquoted earlier, I think I said VK6 for some reason, but I meant to say VK7. Um, but anyway, first step is you gotta glue, well, you gotta run the eyelet into the wood just to get the threads going. And then I'm just gonna run some glue over the hole. And then as I screw the eyelet in, it'll take the glue in with it on the threads. And then we're also gonna put some glue on the back side to kind of act as a fillet. So we'll go ahead and screw that in. Like so. And let me take just a little bit of hip towel here. Well, I guess that'll set up. I was gonna make kind of clean that up, but I think that's actually good to have that little fillet there also. So let's add some glue to the threads on this end. There, kind of let that flow in and around the threads and on the wood. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside just for a second while I go ahead and glue the back plate on. This will be the this will be the end that's taking the direct blast from the ejection charge. And one thing I did not do on the last build is I didn't I didn't add anything to the wood. I just left the wood bare. And on this kit, I think after it sets up and glues the glue dries, I'm just gonna paint some epoxy on the wood just to help kind of keep you know fireproof it so to speak and uh, hopefully it'll last a little longer that way and I've also got my little 16th inch spacer that we're gonna use to press down on to get this up at the right depth 
So let's go ahead and run a thin line of glue here. And I'll, again, use my finger to spread it around. And this is one of those things, if you, if you get too much, well, it'll actually just kind of act as your fillet on the inside. So, I'm gonna take our piece, set it in there. the excess off and then I'm gonna set it on my 16th inch, 16th inch plate there and just press down and there we have it we've got the perfect 1 16th inch depth that they call for okay and then after this dries we'll go back in and glue a nice little fillet on the uh, and you can see the fillets already set up there on the interior so that's what we want. And since this glue is already dried up hard enough on the eyelet, we can go ahead and glue this in also. Yeah, that'll work good. Okay, so same process. I'm gonna use my finger. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. But I'm gonna run a fillet, a little bit larger fillet on the inside. Probably should've done that before I ran this seam, but that's okay. But let me just kinda run that fillet around with my finger. A popsicle stick would work too. If you, if you want to go that route, but uh, there. You can see we kind of spread a little fillet. Clean that up. Now I do want to put a little bit extra glue Although, yeah, that's that's probably more than we need, which is fine, because I won't be able to get inside to put an extra fillet on it. So, I'll go ahead and... There we go. Now this one, I can't use that little plate, so we're just gonna have to eyeball it. Yeah. Let me wipe my fingers down. I'm getting <laughs> the glue spread on places I don't want it spread on. But uh, yeah, let's just press this in a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. That looks good. So now this is completely done. We're just gonna let this sit and dry, and uh, it'll be ready for us when we when we get to that point. Okay, now that the wood glue on the baffle has dried, now we want to seal it and actually make fillets, but I'm going to use epoxy instead of wood glue because the epoxy is also going to help give the wood some fireproofing, which is going to help us uh, obviously give longer life to the baffle. So with that, I'm just going to make up a little bit of five minute epoxy. Technically it's six minute, but it's all the same. And I've also got a little paintbrush that I'm going to use to paint it onto the plywood surface. Okay. Mix this up real good. And the next step we're going to do is actually another modification. We're going to be building the engine mount, but we're not going to build it per the instructions. We're going to build it 
according to having to use the motor retainer which I've elected to go with as opposed to the engine hook. Now there's nothing wrong with the engine hook. I just like the, I don't know, the the sleekness, the the design, the robustness of the retainer. That way you don't have to worry about bending that metal back or anything like that. So, Okay, this is about as milky white as we're going to get it, so it's ready to to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pour it onto the, the wood and then the fillet will actually be created somewhat on its own as it fills in the, the whole area up against the sidewall. But I will help it a little bit by pulling with the popsicle stick. We may not actually need to use the popsicle stick. Assuming I can spread it well enough. Which I am somewhat being successful at. Okay. And just sort of spread it around those holes. And there is a little bit of self-levelness to the epoxy, not as much as, say, a 30-minute or hour-long epoxy, but because five minutes a little thicker because it dries quicker. But uh, it does have, as long as I keep the the tube here upright, it will more or less self-level. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to let some epoxy get into these holes and then I'll spread it with the handle of my paintbrush, which I can clean off easily enough, but just sort of spread it around. That'll coat the wood in there as well. I ended up using the paintbrush after all, just not the end of the paintbrush you'd expect. <laughs> Let's see, with what little bit I got left, we can just go ahead and although everything looks to be wet, I was gonna say fill in the dry spots, but if there's anything dry, it's probably because this Epoxy may have already soaked in, but uh, yeah, there we go. And again, this is five minutes, so it's gonna set up pretty quick. And then on the front end, I can just use regular wood glue and I'll, I'll build up a fillet around the front. But I'm gonna keep this upright. In fact, I can just set it. You can't lay it flat because that hooks, so if you lean it up against something on the, like that roll of tape, it'll hold. And then what I like to do is whenever you make epoxy, leave your mixing stick in the epoxy itself, and then you can monitor it as time goes by, and once it's dry, then you know that it's dry here also. So we're gonna leave that to sit, and then we are going to attack the motor mount. So we'll do that up next. Okay, the next order of business is the motor mount. And as I explained in the last segment, this is gonna be a modification, but in addition to modifying it to accept the motor retainer, I wanna show you what I had to do to the motor mount itself to take the retainer. Now the motor retainer simply, let me show you on this end first. It slides on the motor tube with epoxy. Now not sure if it's uh, sloppy plastic molding or the tube is slightly off but anyway there's a lot of slop in here there's a lot of movement and there's actually an air gap between the cardboard and the plastic. So to take out any of that wobble I took an extra piece of cardboard from an, uh, an existing tube and I glued it, oh, about halfway, just past halfway around. Let's see if you can see that. 
Yeah, you can see it starts here. Just a, a thin piece of cardboard tubing, a little more than halfway around the tube. And that's going to do two things. It's going to fill in that air gap. Oops. And it's also going to make this a lot tighter and snug. And now there's no more air gap around the inside there. So that's one modification I had to make. And whenever you're dealing with this waxy textured, sorry, I'm getting a lot of glare off the light there. Um, whenever you're dealing with this waxy tube, you're going to have to sand to get that sheen off of it because it's very glossy and that'll actually inhibit some of the adhesion that the glue otherwise would give you. So now that, that that's already been glued on with the wood glue, it's good and strong. Now we're ready to proceed. The other thing I want to show you is how you measure for a retainer. They give you a, a spacer. This is a mock motor but it's the same uh, length and width and dimensions and everything as a motor. In fact, I've got an e-motor, an old used uh, E12-6 right here, but you can see it's the same dimensions as an e-motor. Uh, what you want to do though is measure how far down you want the motor so you'll know where to glue your thrust ring or your engine block. And what determines how far the motor goes in is where this retainer is going to fit so you'll have enough threads to screw it on. So what I did was I went ahead and slid this all the way on, screwed on the cap about halfway. Then I pushed the motor from inside with, in fact, let me take the thrust ring out. The motor, because the motor is right here, right? Push it all the way up until it hits the, the screw on cap. Once it does, pinch the motor inside the tube, slide everything off, and then take a pencil and make a mark right at that seam. And in fact, I've already done it right there. So now I know how far in to glue this thrust ring, which is our next step. Now these centering rings, I'll get to those in a bit. Those are, they're not glued on or anything. I'm just, they're there. <laughs> so we're gonna use regular tight bond two wood glue. Got my spacer ready to go. And I also measured a glue stick the, the right length as to where the glue for the thrust ring is going to go. So we'll know how far down the tube to spread the glue. So with that, it's all set to go. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Let me just do it this way because I don't want ready to go. Okay. Run it down to those lines and then just rotate it around inside the tube. Okay, it's going to take more than that. So probably I'll probably do 3 applications of glue to ensure that I've got good coverage. Felt like it was pretty good all the way around, but just for added measure, I'm going to do one more application of glue. Okay, that does it. Then I'm going to take my thrust ring from the aft end, I'm going to slide it in. Now I'm going to take my spacer, I'm going to push it in all the way up to that line, stop, and then immediately pull the spacer right back out. There it is. I'm going to let that sit and dry. There is, I did get a little bit of glue on the spacer, which is good that it's on the spacer and we pulled it out quickly. So it won't become permanent <laughs> and make installing motors more difficult later. So again, we're just going to let the motor set, uh, motor mount sit as is for a little bit until that glue really sets up. Then the next step is we're going to use epoxy. In fact, I'm probably going to use, uh, I'm going to go get some JB Weld and glue this retainer end 
onto the cardboard tube using some JB wool. And then after that, it's simply a matter of using some wood glue to glue on our centering rings at the appropriate locations. And then the motor mount's done. And we're gonna hold off on gluing this until the very end when the rocket is just about complete. So I will come back once I get some JB weld and let that uh, engine, uh, engine block harden a little bit and then we'll get this glued on. Okay, so the next step, I actually skipped on film some of the things I did, but I did go ahead and glue on my centering rings with wood glue and then I also lay down a fillet on each side so you can, let me show you a close up. See the centering rings, I've got fillets here, here, here and here on both sides. And I also laid down a fillet on the inside of the engine block just to give it a little more uh, sturdiness so it's less likely to break free. So that's a pretty thick fillet that I laid in there. So it, it's not fully dried yet because it's pretty thick, but it's it's holding its shape. So the next step is to glue on the, the retainer onto the aft end. And I've already got the JB weld uh, poured. I just need to mix it. We're gonna apply it to the cardboard, which I've roughened up with sandpaper. You wanna make sure you do that so you get good solid adhesion. I also sanded the inside of the ring here. And once I get that JB weld laid down, I'll go ahead and just set that in there like so. And we're gonna have to let it dry for a few hours, probably let it sit overnight before we do any more with this, which is fine because really we need to start working on the fins and the body tubes as well. So let's go ahead and get the JB weld mixed up. And you'll know when JB weld is mixed up because as my buddy Don Brent said in his latest video, JB weld, you mix the black and the white and when it turns a good solid gray, you know you've got good mixture. So, and he brought up the good point also in his latest video on the x-ray that it does not hurt whatsoever to get JB weld on this back portion of the motor mount because there's a lot of heat generated back there by the motor and JB weld is much more heat resilient than standard epoxy. So, and the strength is just crazy strong too. So uh, all good reasons why you wanna use JB Weld at this location in the build. So okay, nice, good, solid gray color there. Um, I know I mixed up way more than I needed to, but I didn't wanna run short. So now we're just gonna take our popsicle stick that we mixed it with and we're just going to apply it around the edge. And as you slide the retainer on, it's going to push the JB weld down toward the centering ring and it'll fill in what we don't quite get. And then also once you get it glued, uh, glued on, you want to twist the retainer, which we'll do. I'll show you that. Just to kind of help spread the glue around a little bit better and ensure better adhesion all the way around. So let me spread this a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and push the epoxy down to the centering ring, which will also help create a bit of a fillet. A, uh, an obvious much stronger fillet than wood glue. But there's definitely, those are things you don't want to compromise on this portion of the build is heat resistance and strength. pushing it with the popsicle stick down into that fillet area. There, just like so. So we got perfect coverage all the way around. I also want to add just a little bit on the edge. And the reason is because that blunt edge of the tube is going to butt up against the lip that's on the retainer. So we'll go ahead and and then more than likely, after I get it on, I'm gonna have to get a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol to go inside and clean 
any that squishes out into the inside of the tube. But uh, at least if we if it does that, we know we got full coverage. So that's actually a good sign. Okay. Full coverage there. Take our retainer. Set it on and twist as we go. And as it hits the centering ring, you see it pushing out. It's, it's helping create that fillet, which is ideal. Okay, I'm just going to continue twisting a little bit to help spread the glue. Very nice. Okay, now I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol. Let me set this down. Just spray a little... rubbing alcohol there and we're just going to wipe the inside yeah, you can see some did seep out which is good we got it out but that also tells us that we got full coverage on the inside Take another piece and just do a little more cleanup on that. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. And that fillet that it created is, let me clean this up just a little bit. get worse <laughs> okay that'd be fine and then that'll get filled in again probably with epoxy down the road once we get this glued into the uh, <clears throat> into the body tube so there we have it the motor mount is officially complete and we're gonna let that sit aside for full drying until we touch it again so uh, the next step is we're going to start working on the fins I really need to get going on the fins, so we'll do that next Okay, I want to go over a few things that I've decided to modify my meme machine with before we move on to the, the steps as per the instructions. But I do want to show you the completed baffle. Uh, this has had plenty of time to cure now. You can actually see a little bit of the gloss here on the back plate where the epoxy is dried, which will help uh, fireproof the wood from the, the ejection blast. So this is solid. This is ready to glue in between. Well, not quite. I still have to attach the the Kevlar and I'm going to do that here at the end of this video or this clip but one thing I want to mention and this idea was a brilliant idea that came from my buddy Don from Retro Rockets and I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video but he made a comment about a six-foot rocket trying to eject with an D or an E motor through six feet of tubing to pop the nose cone off is quite a feat for a motor and he recommended that I break the, the rocket up per se by trying to implement maybe a, a break in the middle as opposed to the nose cone popping out maybe one of the sections coming out so with that thought in mind I went ahead and did some brainstorming and I came up with this solution so I, I'm gonna take one of the couplers that came with the kit but instead of instead of just gluing two tubes to it I decided to make this a bulkhead with a hook and this is going to attach to the front tube up where the nose cone is it'll glue into the cardboard like such but the back end and I've already done this off camera I've created a little plywood uh, plate to glue into the bulkhead so or the coupler creating a bulkhead so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this here in a minute I'm simply going to glue this in just the same way I did the baffle. You'll see the similarities here in the design. And create an airtight fitting that once this glues in 
to this part, this will slip into the other tube and when the injection ch charge goes off, it won't blow the nose cone off, it's gonna blow this entire front section off. So we reduced the charge having to travel through four tubes down to three tubes, which is a significant increase in pressure. So Don, thank you for that idea. I think it's gonna work well. So with that, I can go ahead and get this glued on because I wanna get this going. Uh, this was pretty straightforward. I just took a piece of eighth inch plywood, cut out the diameter, or actually the circumference to fit the inside of the coupler. And I just got a little eyelet for my parts bin. And just like I said we did on the ejection baffle, I'm gonna put a dab of glue on the hole, which has been uh, pre-threaded by me running it through once already. Okay. And then by doing it this way, it's gonna feed the glue down into the threads. There we go. Let me clean this up just a bit. Because this is going to be visible. <laughs> like forever visible so I want this to be a nice clean joint because this is where I'll be attaching parachutes shock cords anything else that I may be attaching to the rocket okay we also want to put a bit of a fillet on the back side of the threads this doesn't have to be as pretty <laughs> I'm gonna glob that on but that should make a nice solid bond and it, it would probably hold without the glue itself because it's a pretty tight tight fit but anyway so let me let that set for just a second and I'm, all, I'm gonna run a bead of glue around the inside of the coupler like I said if you saw me build the, the baffle it's the exact same process and I'm gonna set it in maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so that way I'll be able to glue a fillet around the perimeter as well okay and smooth that out with my finger just lay that in there and just gonna have to eyeball it to get that sixteenth of an inch but uh, again this is going to be visible so you want it to be aesthetically straight because you're gonna see it and if it's crooked you're gonna say hmm not too good <laughs> but uh, Looks good to me. All right, and since I, you know, it's gonna hold. Let me just go ahead and put the, the fillet on now. No re no reason to wait. A little sloppy going on, but once I get the fillet built up, it'll it'll clean up. Typical modeler. Put glue on just in order to smear it right off. There we go. So we got the fillet on that side. Uh, wouldn't hurt to put a little fillet on the inside as well. This one, I, <laughs> I way overdid it, but that's okay. I'm just gonna coat the whole thing. That way it'll help hold that screw even better. Not that it would ever come out anyway, but there's no way it's coming out now. So, there we have it. And I'm not gonna close this end off because like I said, it's gonna just glue on the end of a tube. 
like such and then it'll stay like that permanently and then this is what will slide into the remainder of the rocket body so got that done we're gonna set this aside to dry and the other thing I wanted to do on camera was to attach the Kevlar cord to our baffle which is gonna be between the most aft body tube and the second tube after that and what I've already done is just gone ahead and tied a little loop into the end of this knot and this is gonna be way too long and I'll cut it to the appropriate length when that time comes but I'm just gonna feed that through the loop okay, and cinch that down to the hook like so and you know what I'll do is let me just uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot and let me double knot it and even though in theory flame should never come this far I'm gonna go ahead and uh, if you remember I did this on my Zephyr my full-size Zephyr I'm gonna wrap some heat shrink tubing when I do it on most of my smaller rockets too the heat shrink tubing over the knot and it does two things one it helps fireproof it but it also will help hold the knot from ever coming undone so let me pull that bit down and I'm also gonna put a dab of glue on the knots in other words, there is no way this is ever going to come undone, but that's good because I'm never going to be able to access this baffle again once it's glued into the tubes. Okay, Just kind of wrap and smear that and finesse it into the fibers. There we go. Okay, so that is now permanently attached, and this is, pro I'll, I'll have to play by ear, but I'm more than likely going to run this Kevlar cord the length of one tube, and then tie another loop on the end where I'll be able to attach my elastic cord. So the, that I'm gonna let that dry up a bit, then I'm just gonna off camera take some heat shrink and just run it over the knot to help keep that all contained. So again, I'm gonna do that off camera. So if you notice, I'm procrastinating on doing the fins. I keep saying I'm gonna do the fins next, the fins next, because I haven't decided yet how I'm gonna do the fins. What I'm more than likely gonna do, and you'll see it in the next next clip, I'm not gonna promise you though the next clip, but uh, I'm probably gonna paper these. I did paper fins on my High, Fly, High Flyer XL, and it came out superb. Uh, very strong, very durable. The paint laid down very nicely. Uh, well, minimal sanding prior to the paper, but no final sanding because you can't sand the paper. So I think it's just an easier way to go. Um, not sure if I want to use decal paper or glue down copy, copy paper. Um, we'll see. But that'll again be the next step. <laughs> I said that before. But anyway, just want to get you caught up on the speed on things. And uh, yeah, we're making progress. Okay, there are two things I want to accomplish in this segment of the video. First thing is I want to install the ejection baffle in one of the four tubes. I need to actually start gluing stuff into these tubes to make it look like a rocket. And you guys may remember when I built my VK7, I kind of made up this little tool. It's just simply PVC pipe with the cardboard ring around it. But what I'm going to use it for is to hold the shock cord it's a little loose there. Hold the shock cord away from the glue that I'm going to put down for the ejection baffle. So this is a pretty straightforward process. I'm just going to run a ring of glue all the way around in the inside of the tube and then just simply slide this in halfway. Now before I do that, I need to measure the halfway mark on this. So let's see, this is a exactly two inches in length so I'm using the the guard guide here on my cutting mat so I'm just gonna make a mark at the one inch point there we go so I'll glue it down to that point is what I'm gonna do and if you don't know how this works I'll well you'll see how it how it works as I as I use it 
but uh, pretty straightforward. What it does is it's going to keep the cord down the center and from falling into the side where the glue is going to be. So we'll run our bead of glue here. And I'm just using uh, wood glue. It's cardboard to cardboard, so that's a good adhesive for that purpose. And you want to put the glue on the the recept receiving side because then the glue will be pushed down and it won't ooze out to the outside and then it'll just make a mess. So just kind of spread this around a little bit. Okay. Probably put more on than I need to, but I <laughs> I tend to do that. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to slide that ring forward to this point. Insert my shock cord. Okay, and it came out the back, so I'm going to pull. Okay. Now I'm just going to run this into the tube while pushing the little tool I made back. And just I'm going to twist this as I go. Okay, I'm going to pinch that and kind of slide this out the back. There we go. Now, the best thing you can do at this point is literally just walk away. Don't don't mess with it. Just don't fiddle with it. Just let it dry. Let it do it. Let it do its thing. So I'm going to set this up and out of the way. Now, since I'm in the process of gluing stuff into tubes, we can go ahead and glue oops, our motor mount. Now I, I need to explain something here on the motor mount. When I first built this, I simply put on the cardboard centering rings that they give you, and it was such a loose fit, you could you could wiggle this inside the tube that if I were to put glue on it, the glue would just seep right past the joint. So what I did was I took very simple uh, thick CA glue and ran a thin bead along the outer edge of that cardboard. And then I just got a piece of paper from my copier, um, my printer, just regular copy paper, and just laid it around that edge let it dry, and then I took my X-Acto knife and I just slowly cut it around the rim. So we've gained a thickness of a sheet of paper. And I had to do that on both ends. And it is a perfectly snug fit now. So it'll hold the glue much better. There's no more wiggling. It's absolutely perfect. Now I am going to have to eyeball this, but I'm going to glue it with maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch deep along that lip. And we can fill that the rest in later with epoxy, but I'm just going to fill it to that point. Now what I want to do also is measure with a stick how far I need to run the glue. And it looks like... I've got a, the same measurement I made to glue the thrust ring in. I'm going to use that same, those two lines there to run the glue to the inside. So don't have to remark it. Okay. Okay, there's no going back now. I'm making a mess. Okay, that's one. Fortunately, this glue will clean up easy with water.
Okay, I'm gonna put one more for added measure. But this, those three uh, applications would probably suffice, but I want it to be able to build up a good size fillet. There we go, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna insert the first portion of it. Now that I've got that first ring passed, I can run another ring. Let me see if I can scrape up some of this. Run another ring for that aft centering ring. got to be mindful that that glue that I already put up the tube is hardening on me so I can't dilly dally too long with with this operation Now we'll put it in. I can feel the resistance, that's good. That's a good sign. All right, push that in, give it a twist. There we go, I'm about, a, oh, about an eighth of an inch in, which is about where we wanna be. Okay. It's really hard to, to see up in there, but it pushed up a little bit of a fillet. I'm trying to get where I can get some light in there for you, but. But uh, you, you, you can get the concept. As the glue got pushed forward, it built up a fillet. In fact, I'm gonna set the tube vertically this way, so then the fillets will stay in on the centering rings. All right, again, hardest part, patience, having to wait. So, all right, we will, <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think we're gonna get to the fins next, but don't hold your breath. Okay, still procrastinating on the fins. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. I'm still planning and deciding how I'm going to handle those. Probably, probably going to be paper with glue. But uh, anyway, I do want to join the two lower tube halves here. This is the tube that we glued the ejection baffle into. Still has the Kevlar coming out the, the front end. And then we have the rear tube that has the motor mount in it. And we, so we're simply going to take wood glue just like we glued this baffle in and glue the two together. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of slop either way. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because that gives us some freedom to, to work the glue around and you know make adjustments. But once we get it together, the question is how do we keep it straight? So I'm gonna uh, implement two different tools here. I'm gonna first of all use the uh, tube alignment guide that Estes sells. And I'm gonna use the BT60 slot. And once we glue it in together, I've got a piece of wax paper that I'm going to use to keep glue from sticking to the plastic. But once we get these joined together, I'm simply going to lay it in the guide and pull it down into the, the bottom groove here. And we're going to take some blue tape and just wrap it over. Additionally, I've got a piece of railing. This is the, the type of thing that you can get at the home, uh, like home improvement store to put shelving on the walls with. And it's got this nice little channel groove on one side that will allow us to keep the top straight as well. So we've got basically the bottom, one side, and then the top. And then I'm gonna wrap this with tape as well. And that'll hold everything secure while the, the glue sets up. In theory, once it's dry, three of the four sh uh, sides should be perfectly straight, which would end up making the fourth side straight as well. So that's how we're gonna go about doing this. And then once we're done, we can verify by rolling the tube on a flat surface and make sure that it rolls with no wobble. So let me set everything aside while we get the glue ready to go. Again, just using regular wood glue. Get paper towel ready to clean my fingers off because <clears throat> inevitably I'll end up making a mess. So we're gonna separate the two. We're, again, we're gonna glue, apply the glue to the inside of the aft end and then slide 
the baffle into it. So this will be the last time uh, human eyes will ever see this portion of the rocket. Again, you can see the glossiness. That's because we coated this with epoxy to help keep the wood fireproof to make it last a little bit longer than it otherwise would. Let me go ahead and lay the wax paper down and have it ready to go. So now we're just gonna take our wood glue Apply it in. I'm going to be somewhat liberal with it. Of course, you don't want too much because then it gets heavy, but the weight is minimal. But we want to make sure we get full good coverage. And you want to make sure you get it all the way up to the joint. And additionally, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the tube, mainly for the purpose of having a, some glue that'll end up in that little butt joint right there. So let me wrap, let me run some glue around this piece as well. Again, this is gonna put some glue up into that, on that lip right there, once it goes together, okay? This is it. Okay, we're gonna kind of twist as we go. In case we get some drop, yep, just in time, I, I got that. Okay, so there's the joint. Now, I'm gonna take this paper towel and we're gonna wipe the glue that seeped out off. You wanna make sure that's nice and clean, otherwise it'll just be more to sand off in the future. We also want to apply some tape lengthwise to help keep the two halves pulled together tightly. Okay, there's one, and let's do this side. Take some tape and run it over the tube and onto the bracket, like such. Do the same thing on this side. And we'll do one down the middle. paper there. I'm going to lay this across the top. So just like that, we're gonna leave this to dry as is, and again, in theory, it should come out straight. We'll see what we get. Okay, it's been sitting for probably seven or eight hours now, 
So plenty of time for the glue to, to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of our little contraptions here. And we should have a perfectly straight body tube. Okay, I didn't realize I used this much tape. All right, and I also inserted all these little foam peanuts to help kind of keep it pushed into the one side. Oh, I just lift this up and out. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Remove these two strips of tape. off enough space here I can test this out and see if how she rolls um, doesn't seem to have any wobble to it let me do an eyeball test down the length of the tube slowly rotating it in my hand and it is 100% absolutely perfectly straight so that's what we wanted we achieved our goal of a solid piece now. Again, we got the motor in this end. The ejection baffle is at the center point, and we've got the Kevlar coming out the end. So we are in good shape to proceed. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to do the fins next because uh, I can't think of anything else to do. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna set this aside and uh, we're gonna start working on the fins now. Okay, we've finally gotten to the point where we're gonna paper our fins. I've been procrastinating because I'm, I've been playing out different ideas through my, my head of how I wanna do it. And I've, this is the same technique I did when I built my High Flyer XL and it worked perfectly. So I figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I wanna show you what we're gonna need. Obviously the fins, we're gonna use some Elmer's white glue, multi-purpose, it's really good on paper. So that's why we want to go with that. Although wood glue would work as well, but uh, I'm going to go with the white glue this time. Need regular old printer paper. Just go to your printer and pull some paper out and that's all you need. Uh, some popsicle sticks to spread with and a straight edge. And the reason we're going to use the straight edge is for, well, basically when I paper the fins, we're going to leave the bottom, oh, about eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch bare. So I'm actually going to draw a line with the ruler and I'm going to tape that off because I don't want to paper the, the root edge or down toward the root of the fin because when I after I glue the fin on and I run my fillet, I want my fillet glue adhering directly to the wood, not to paper. That will give a little bit extra strength for that epoxy on the fillet. So uh, first and foremost, we're going to want to sand these while they're still in their template makes things a lot simpler so just take some you know 220 or you know not too coarse but you want to smooth the wood out but because we're going to be applying the, the paper to this it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect so you don't have to sand it and sand it and sand it until there's nothing left just sand it till it's smooth enough where the paper will will lay down nicely That, that's real good right there. So from that, now we just have to cut the little tabs that are holding the fins in place. And there's several of these. So I'll just go ahead and skip four. I'm gonna start cutting these and we'll come back to when I've got one fin to work with. Okay, now we've got all four fins cut out from the template and I want to gather them all together and because these were laser cut from the factory they're going to be pretty close to being perfectly uh, you know 
equal and in fact they are but there's still those little tabs and nubs that we were cutting through so we want to take our sanding block and just square up all four fins to be equal by sanding off those tabs and you got to be careful when you do this not to apply too much pressure to one side or the other because then you're going to have uneven fins and that's going to defeat the purpose of what we're doing here okay those are good and make sure when you're doing this you're pinching as tight as you can so there's no no slipping because if they slip out of alignment then you almost have to start a start over again okay two down three and then fourth is going to be the actual root edge that's this is the end that gets glued to the rocket body a little bit more Just a tad bit more. I feel that nub still just a tad. There we go. Okay. Now, one thing I will mention is the instructions call for rounding the leading edge of the fins. And as it stands right now, because these were laser cut from the factory and I pretty much kept them square with sanding, the odds of me changing the aerodynamic flow will greatly increase if I try to round it off. As it stands right now, there might be a little bit extra drag because they're flat as opposed to round, but the rocket will still primarily track straight. But if I do try to round something this small off and they're off so slightly, you can develop a twist or a spin in the rocket flight. Not saying it's not gonna happen anyway, but the odds are much greater of having that result if you try to round them off. And on such a small fin, I just don't see the benefits of it. So I'm gonna forego rounding the leading edge. And, uh, and that'll make papering easier, painting easier, gluing easier, just everything just a little bit easier by keeping it that way. So that being said, let me set the sandpaper aside. And we're just gonna do one fin at a time. Uh, well, I'm gonna do one and then I'll do the other three off camera, but just, just to show you how I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we do one of these fins. I'm gonna do the other three off camera, but I wanna show you how we paper a fin. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna mark off three sixteenths of an inch to cover up so we don't glue this portion of it because I want to leave this exposed for the epoxy fillets to have more purchase. I don't want the epoxy on the paper, I want it directly to the wood. So I'm just going to mark off a line here and then we're going to end up taping that off with some masking tape also to keep the, the glue off that portion of the wood. Okay, the other thing I too, I've already gotten two pieces of paper pre-cut and ready to, to lay down. So I'm just gonna lay the tape down and let me trim off the excess. And 
I'll go ahead and do the same on this side. Again, that's just to keep the glue from getting onto the wood. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure there's no lint. And I'll, I'll blow the dust off again once I'm ready to glue it down. But just make sure there's nothing floating on the wood there. Okay, just take your white glue. I'm going to turn this so I can actually use the tape as a place to hold my finger. Take a popsicle stick and we just start spreading as even a coat as we can and then after I get it completely covered I'll wipe most of it off there okay and then just use the the blunt edge of the stick and just swipe it off take our paper lay it up against that tape Smooth it out. Okay. And I'm just going to remove the tape. Do the same to this side. And one thing I'm going to do that I didn't do on that last side was I'm going to take the tape off before I put the paper down. There we go. All right. And before it sets up too much, I'm going to go set it down under the on the uh, the bench with some weights on it and this will help flatten it down and keep it uh, keep it flat. Okay, quick update on some stuff here. I got the fins done. Uh, last you saw, I had just glued the paper onto them. Didn't really do any of this on camera, but it's pretty straightforward. What you do is just, if anything, replace your knife blade, get a nice sharp blade, and just go along the edge and trim off the paper. And in a couple instances, some of the corners were lifting, but that's okay because what you wanna do is after you get all the paper cut to fit, you just run some thin CA glue all around the seam or the, the outer edge. But one thing to note, do not run glue along the root edge of the fin because that's going to be what's glued to the body tube and you want to keep that clean and, and porous. So, But when you run the CA around the edges, it'll, it'll help pull down any of those paper corners that might have been lifting on you. So those are all done and they are ready to glue on to the body once we're at that point. So these are all set to go. Set those aside. And the next thing we want to do is take our body tube. And it's much longer now, as you can see, it's <laughs> two tubes together. In fact, they are two 18 inch tubes, so 36 inches as it stands now. But we want to go to the aft end. Now, before I wrap the fin guide on and make my marks for the fins, I want to roughen up the, the gloss coat a little bit on this cardboard so if I mark it now I'm gonna have to sand it off and then we may lose our marks so I'm gonna go ahead and sand now and then we'll mark for our fins so I'm just taking some 220 and very lightly I'm just running this over the aft end where the fins and the launch lug are gonna go 
I'm I'm not applying any pressure at all. Literally, I'm just running this back and forth without pushing down on it. And wow, what a difference. You can already feel. Maybe at this angle you can see this is shiny, 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 and then rough. So about right there is the dividing line. I'm not sure if it how well it shows up on camera or not, but and it still looks like it's got a gleam to it. But trust me, it, it doesn't. It's been roughened up. Maybe, well, there's a couple. Let me go the other way on, on twisting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. If anything, you can really feel the difference. You can probably see the color change about right there. Anyway, so that that's that's easy enough to do. Uh, next thing we want to do is take our fin guide, like I mentioned, and go ahead and grab some blue tape because we're going to use that to hold it down, and just simply wrap this around the tube and line up the marks. And then just lay down our tape. Okay. Now one thing I will mention, the directions say that the fins are glued down with the bottom of the fin being one inch up from the bottom of the, the body tube. So knowing that fact, you know, we don't, and we don't need to, you know, we don't need to draw our fin line halfway up the tube either. We, we have a rough idea of where it needs to be. But uh, yeah, just go ahead and once you get it taped down, go ahead and mark your fins, your launch lug. I'm just going to mark an L and the other fin. Fin. And fin. Now you notice I'm only doing one mark, and that's because I'm going to use my alignment guide anyway. So regardless if I got one dot or two dots, that uh, not fin alignment guide, but the body tube marking guide is going to draw a straight line anyway. So I didn't bother marking on both sides. Okay. So then, then let me go grab my my tube on my uh, marking guide. And this is as simple as just lining our dot along the edge. Like so. Launch lug, same thing. With one exception, I am going to take the launch lug mark higher because we're going to put two launch lugs on this rocket. It's slipping a little bit. Okay, so there we have it, the four fins and the one launch lug mark. That's really all there is to that. So the next step, we're going to actually glue our fins down to the cardboard. Okay, now the moment has arrived where we are actually going to glue the fins onto the body tube. Now one thing I did off camera, well two things I did actually, is one, I marked one inch up from the bottom of the tube and then just ran my fin alignment guide around it and then use this as a as a guide like a template and just drew around the, the lip of this at the one inch mark so that's where the the bottom end of each fin is going to glue onto the tube 
And the other thing I did too was I went ahead and extended the launch lug line all the way up to the halfway point. And I, I roughed that up before I made my mark too. So that'll be ready to take the glue for the launch lug when time comes. All right, so I'm gonna do the first fin on camera and then the other three I'm gonna do off camera because I'm gonna have to let this sit and dry between fins anyway. So I, I don't wanna have to bother about re refilming each one. So we'll do the first one on camera and then the subsequent ones we'll do off. So, pretty straightforward process here. In fact, I'm gonna get a paper towel ready because I know my fingers are gonna get messy. Okay, have that on standby. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bead of glue on the root edge of the fin, place it on the, the tube where I want it, and then I'm gonna remove it. And then there's gonna be glue on the body and on the fin. And we're gonna let, let that dry up for about a minute until it gets tacky. Then when I put this back down, it will hold. Whereas if I just put it on wet glue, it'll start sliding and flopping around and, and it won't hold its position very well. So that's the technique we're gonna use. And a lot of people on YouTube do that technique, and I've done it in the past and it works really well. So no reason to do anything different. Okay. Okay, nice even film along the root. Okay, I'm just gonna line this up on that line, make sure I don't do the uh, the launch lug. Okay, down, and then up. There we go. So now we're just gonna let that sit for about a minute, and we'll come down and then permanently glue this on. Okay, it's been about a minute since we let that uh, glue start to tack up on us. So now this is all important that we maintain a uh, Good position here so i'm going to again find the, the bottom end put it right on that center line and then lay the the fin down and that tackiness should hold it perfectly as it does okay i'm gonna check and make sure we are perpendicular we are okay so now I'm just gonna let that sit for an hour or so and uh, I'm gonna come back and do the remaining three off camera but I'm gonna do the same technique that you saw here and we'll be good to go okay we've allowed the fins to set up overnight with the wood glue that we glued them on with and off camera I went ahead and wrapped a forward and a, a rearward a uh, wrap of uh, masking tape just to keep the epoxy off any more to the tube than we need to get on. Um, I elected not to run glue, I'm sorry, tape down the center because it didn't leave enough gap for where I want to put the glue on. Um, so I'm just going to kind of freehand it and try to keep it clean. Also, I don't want to put tape on the paper because when I peel it off, I'm afraid I might peel some of the paper with it. So we're just going to have to to go with it without any masking on the fin or the body tube itself. But I do have my rock epoxy mixed up. It's just a part A, part B epoxy. And this is the same stuff you see me use on other projects. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. <clears throat> it's It dries hard as rock, it's strong as could be. But additionally, it's so thick that it doesn't run. So when I put it in place as a fillet, it's not gonna ooze and <laughs> drip around on me. It's gonna stay where I put it, so that's the advantage to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I do have some larger popsicle sticks that I'm gonna use to run the fillet with, but I'm just gonna use a standard popsicle stick to apply it to the surface. And I kinda like to try to push any air bubbles out by kinda shoving it into the corner with the stick initially. There we 
we go. And like I said, just take a standard popsicle stick and draw that out. And you're going to have a lot of leftover, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag it over to the other side. And you'll also want to make sure you've got plenty of uh, Q-tips and rubbing alcohol on hand for cleanup because this can get messy. Again, just kind of work it into the, the corner, just like that. And we're going to draw this out. And I'm going to apply it to the opposite side there, just so we don't waste any. Okay, looks like we've got two good fillets going so far, so I'm just going to keep up with it. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end, so you don't have to bother watching the repeat, repeat on all these fillets. But that's the basic premise, so we'll catch up with you when I'm finished with the fillets. Okay, now that I've got all the fillets in place, I removed all the tape around, and I've already done a little smoothing out. But the first thing I did was I went over the edges on the fin and the body where the little leftover was accumulated and I just wiped that off with a q-tip with rubbing alcohol on it so now that I've got all that cleaned up you know kind of go over and just look for any blemishes you may see work on the leading edge trying to smooth that out round it out I kind of use a little rolling technique with the alcohol because the alcohol will thin it a little bit and allow it to flow a little bit smoother and then you just kind of roll it into the cardboard and it becomes one just like so It makes that transition much more smooth. And I'm not even really accumulating any rock epoxy on my Q-tip. I'm just sort of flattening it, kind of like dough on a in your kitchen. You just roll it out. And if you've got enough baking soda, or not baking soda, but flour, it won't stick. Well, that's kind of what I'm doing here. There's enough alcohol on here where it's not sticking to the Q-tip and I'm able to roll it out flat to make a nice smooth transition. And again, the more you can do while it's still malleable, the less sanding you're gonna have in the, down the road. <laughs> and trust me, I like to minimize my sanding. Okay, just if you see any leftover, just go ahead and hit it with the Q-tip. Back end looks good. Yeah, overall I'm very pleased with it. So I'll, now again, the tough part is just letting this sit. I'm gonna let it sit overnight before I even think about touching it. But uh, yeah, we're about ready for priming and painting. So we're getting down to the, the last few stages on this build, so let's keep going. Okay, the final step before we start primering the rocket is to glue on the launch lugs and what they do at Estes is they give you one two inch launch lug and they want you to cut it in half so you have two one inch pieces. One will go down here near the body and bottom of the tube and the other one up near the joint where the two tubes were joined together. So the first step is obviously cutting this in half and the easiest way that I found to cut these launch lugs is just make a mark where you want the cut to be so at this point in this case, we're going to mark it at the one inch place there. Okay. And then, instead of trying to saw or cut your way through it, you just take a, an X Acto knife, place it on that point, and just roll back and forth. See? Hopefully, the rocket's not blocking the view. And just keep rolling it with slightly increasing the pressure. And then suddenly, voila. 
it slices right through. And there you have a nice clean cut. So, uh, it's the way I've done it in the past and it always seems to work. I am gonna maybe just clean the inner edge just a little bit, kind of ream it out with the knife blade, but it doesn't take much. There we go. Okay, so now it's ready to glue on. And unlike the fins, I'm gonna use the same glue, but I'm not gonna put it on and then remove it. I'm just gonna put it on and leave it on because it's such a small, lightweight piece. So this is a very, very straightforward operation. Let me clean that inside out just a little bit more first. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna take And we're going to do fillets also, but we're not going to do it the same way we did the fins either. We're, we're not going to beef it up with rock epoxy. We're just going to keep it simple with some wood glue after this is dried. So this bottom portion lines up right at the bottom point in line with where the bottom of the fins are. So just going to eyeball it down the center line of the rocket. Just like so. Do a quick eyeball check from the back looking down looks good just a little tweak there okay and then the other one is gonna go slide the stand back so you can see better it's gonna go up against the joint where the two tubes met so same process, just run a small bead of wood glue. Like so. Lay this down. Now the easiest way to line it up with the, the rear lug is just, just to sight down and confirm they're in line with each other. And your eyeballs will be able to notice any little twist that needs to be straightened. Sorry. Kinda, I can't, I'm not able to get the whole rocket in view. In fact, I'm bumping the camera trying to, sorry about that, but uh, you just have to trust me that uh, I'm aligning it from looking through, kind of like a gun sight, if you ever look through a rifle sights, that's basically what, what we're doing here. Okay, so they're lined up, I'm going to let those dry, it won't take long, and then once they are, then we can just make simple fillets using wood glue, as opposed to having to go through all the rigmarole of mixing epoxies up. So there you have it, in fact, I'm probably going to do that off camera. No reason to go through the effort of filming such a simple operation, but I am just gonna run a bead of glue down along the joints in there on both sides, and then just let that dry, and then uh, literally the next step will be primer. So I'm gonna let this, let it sit. Again, the hardest part is just waiting. Okay, if any of you have seen my previous videos, you know that I like to utilize the nose cone as my electronics bay. Uh, I, some people try to you know jam in their altimeters and stuff inside the body tube where the parachute goes, and that's just more opportunity in my opinion to cause a jam up or you know the parachute not to deploy properly. So I like to tuck as much electronics as I can up in the nose cone, freeing the path for the parachute to come out of the tube. Now I realize this rocket's going to be set up a little bit differently in that my parachute's going to be down in the second tube from the top not the first but you know you never know if you ever want to add weight or you know do any modifications I like to have the nose cone open so first thing I'm going to do on the nose cone is open up this hole to almost a full half moon shape opening so to do that simply I'm going to take my Dremel with the drum sander on it and it's going to be a little noisy so um, I won't be talking, you'll just have to watch and, <laughs> and wait.
Okay, now that I've made a thorough mess of everything, there's plastic pieces everywhere, I'll vacuum that up later. But uh, there's our nice little half moon shape. I'm gonna take uh, just some hand paper and by hand kind of smooth that out a little bit. But that's a perfect opening for us to be able to put our, either the Jolly Logic altimeters or even the Flight Sketch minis will fit up in there. Even though they're in their protective pouch, the pouches will fit in there too, which is even, even better for protection. So yeah, there we have it. Now it's ready to, um, uh, one other thing, we need to cut this little, I'm gonna cut this out even though, well, I'm gonna think about that because I'm never gonna deploy this, but just maybe for safety, I might run a hook to it. So I'm gonna cut this little eyelet. So we've cut that opening, and I'll have to figure out uh, in the days to come how I may attach this, and even if I do attach it to what. So I'll have to figure out that in the, the planning stages. But yeah, that's uh, I accomplished my goal there. You can see a bunch of plastic down there at the bottom, and my table is littered in little plastic shavings. So, but uh, yeah, moving on. Okay, the painting is done if you exclude the clear coat, which we'll do after we get the decals on, but the base colors are complete on the rocket. Now, right now, we're just working on the bottom section, which is painted white. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the results, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward now with the decals. And once we finish with the decals, I'm gonna let them sit overnight and dry and harden on the, on the surface. And then tomorrow night, hopefully I can start with the clear coating process and I'll I'll show you how I do that later. Uh, the first thing I want to do is the way, let me show you the picture, the, the way the decals are laid out. The, the main logo there, the Mean Machine decal, looks like it's centered between not the body tube ends, but between the black stripes. So I want to get the black stripes down as a, as a guideline to work from. And it looks like the black stripe on the rear is maybe an inch i'm gonna say it's half the length of the fin root up from the fin so i'm going to call that an inch up from the fins and one thing i ran into when i was just kind of dry fitting it was when you wrap here's the black stripe when you black when you wrap the black stripe around it you come up a little short which was a little discouraging i'm like you know if, if it's extra at least you can trim off or do some overlap but when it comes up short like this it's like well not a whole lot you can do with that so what I've decided to do is since the logo is going to be on the side opposite the launch lugs I'm gonna put that gap in the black stripe in line with the launch lug so it kind of may look like it's part of the effect of okay the launch rods going up the center there therefore there's gonna be a little gap in the black so that's kind of my uh, thought process because I'm not gonna attempt to maybe you know after the decals down to put some paint or black marker and fill in the gap that would just i think look cheesy so i'm going to leave the gap and i'm going to put the gap in line with the launch lugs so i'm going to go ahead and drop this in some water just to get the process started and same same thing up the front again there's two black stripes one in the rear and one up the front and the picture here shows that the thinner of the black stripes is on the top so I got to make sure that when I put this down that the the fatter end is toward the bottom and the skinnier line is toward the chalk the top once I get these two down then we can get a center line measure the center of those two stripes and then I'll send I'll get measure the center of that decal and we'll get this precisely laid down in the right orientation so with that it's been a few seconds now that it's been soaking in the water if it's broken free, I'll go ahead and uh, get that going. And it has broken free. So, like I said, I'm going to go about an inch up. Let me get my ruler here just to get an idea. Ballpark right there. I'm eyeballing it. Okay. Again, I'm going to start the gap 
in line with the launch lugs. Try to hold it, bring it around, and lo and behold, they almost meet. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry if my head gets over the shot, but I want to get an eyeball on this to make sure it's perfectly aligned. Boy, they almost, almost meet. But uh, there we go. That's as close as we're going to get it. Hold this up closer to the camera. That's as close as we're going to get it. But in my in my book, that's not bad, actually. And like I said, it's in line with the launch lug. So I'm going to call that good. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. And be careful how I set this down. And just wrap and try to squeegee out any excess moisture making sure the stripes are still in alignment with each other which they are let me flip it over and let me work kind of work it out okay um a little disappointing actually if you see on the paper towel there's a couple little black specks <laughs> and there is a little bit of decal loss I don't know if it's gonna focus the stripe broke up a little bit so that's a little uh, disheartening <laughs> that it would do that um, but it's not too bad and once we get it clear coated then it'll be protected but uh, I'm gonna say a little poor poor quality there on that decal for two reasons one it came up a little short and, and I, I'm not going to blame it on the diameter thickness changing much because I didn't put much paint on it. Um, two light coats and one wet coat on top of a you know one good coat of primer. So that shouldn't have been the issue. I think they should have printed those a little bit longer. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the front stripe the same way. And then I'll come back and do the fin decals and the center one after a bit. Okay, so I've got the two stripes on. You saw me do the, the rear stripe with that minimal gap. Minimal gap right there. And I've got that in line with the launch lug. But on the front end, it actually came out <laughs> a little better. Uh, the gap is not quite as severe. So um, I'm not displeased with it. But uh, now I want to work on the decals on the tail fins. And there's two sets that come with the kit. You get four, four of these diagonal uh, triangular shaped decals and four of the same thing with a, I don't know what that is, a snake's mouth, whatever makes the, the mean machine mean, it's that guy right there. So these are the two that go on the fins. Now each fin is the same in that you put the one without the monster <laughs> right there and then the one with the monster on the opposing side right there. So I'm gonna do the first set here on camera and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three off. Uh, let me get that soaking in the water. But that's that's the premise to its layout. Pretty simple design. And I, I, I'm pretty sure it'll go down pretty smooth. One thing I didn't do on the other decals is this time I'm gonna use some Q-tips to help press the water out because these are a little bit more, you know, um, more area so to speak, and to prevent bubbles from forming, I want to kind of squeegee out any air. Okay, these decals separate pretty quickly, so that didn't take long at all to, to break off the backing. So let me just kind of slide this into place. Kind of work it into position. And you do have some working time, so you don't have to feel too rushed. Okay, I like that position right there. So starting in the center, I'm just going to start rolling the Q-tip to act as a press to work out any air bubbles and water that still may be trapped inside the decal. Just rolling it out. And as you roll, you see physically the water being pushed out. And then once 
once you get a lot of the water out, it'll start to hold its shape and position. Very nice. Yeah, these decals are going down nice and they'll hold. I think they'll hold even without the clear coat going over top of them, but we're definitely gonna put the clear coat over it. All right, so we did that one. Now I wanna demonstrate the other one, which basically is the same thing, except it's got that creature guy on it. And then, uh, like I said, I'll do the other three fins the same way. And we'll come back and get that center logo put on the front side of the rocket. And then the rocket is then ready for clear coat. And I don't have the upper body tubes to show you right now, but they are solid blue, as is the nose cone. And uh, I'll have to show you that at the completion portion of the video. But uh, it came out really nice. Really pleased with the, the paint that I chose to go with. And I'll talk more about that when I show them. But uh, let's see, is this already? Yep, this one's free also. Okay. So same process, just gonna kind of lay it in position. And then drag the backing off from behind. And this one... It needs a little more water underneath the fin. It was grabbing too much, and I don't want it to grab just yet. I want it to float until I can get it into position better, which is right there. That looks good. Okay, so now I'll take my, my Q-tip again. almost feels like I might have a little too much water, but uh, that will evaporate and, and, and kind of burn off. I know, I know I'm not talking much. I'm just trying to keep a steady hand here. Now, part of this decal is clear, so just because you don't see the decal doesn't mean it's not there. So we need to work out all this area around this gruesome looking face <laughs> to make sure we get all the moisture and water out. There's a big water bu bubble there I had to push out the front. One other thing I'll mention is the fact that right where these decals are going, there might there was a slight ridge where the fillet met the cardboard. And I, I sanded it down just a little bit, but one thing to keep in mind is you don't have to drive yourself crazy trying to sand and make that perfect because this decal covers up the, that line. And I'm not using that as a cop-out. I'm just saying in past experiences, I've had, I, I've created more problems for myself when I tried to make something perfect than leaving well enough alone when it was good enough. And it was, at that point, it was good enough because when I first laid down the fillets, I took the time to use the Q-tip with rubbing alcohol and smooth out that transition and make it as good as I could. So that way, the, now that I've got you know, time for the paint and the decals, it's good enough for me. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> so anyway, just my two cents worth on that. I've, I've ruined more projects by trying to make them perfect than accepting them as is. So just uh, something to think about. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the remainder of these fins and then we'll come back and get that center logo done. Okay, so we've got the fins complete now. Let me show you those real quick. Those came out really, really slick. I'm really pleased with them. 
uh, very consistent. They all lay down about e evenly and equally with one another. So I'm, again, more than pleased with that. So now what I want to do is lay down the main decal, which is this one here that's going to go down the, the side of the body tube. And it's going to go on the side opposite the launch lug. So let me rotate this 180 degrees and it's going to lay down right here in the center. Now I've already marked off with a, a yardstick and determined the center point on the body tube between the black stripes. And on the decal itself, this very center of this decal pretty much lines up with the right leg in the word machine here in the letter M. That's about the center point of this decal. So just like before, I'm gonna lay this in the water, get it sticky, take it off, lay it down, and I'm gonna slide it into position until that end lines up on that center point between the two black stripes on the body tube. Uh, pretty straightforward from there. So let me go ahead and lay this down in the water. Probably not quite enough water. Well, there, I'll just, it'll roll up. So there we go. I'll just let that soak for a few moments. So now one thing I can do, which I didn't bring any tape, I could make things a little easier on myself by placing a piece of tape, like at the center point, but I don't have any tape with me right here. But once I lay the decal down, I'll get the ruler. I got the, the yardstick right here and I'll do a quick measurement. And um, the, is it gonna be like to the millimeter um, precise? No, it's not. <laughs> it may not even be within an eighth of an inch, but but within a quarter inch. And that's gonna be good enough for me because your eyeballs aren't gonna be able to notice anything that's not within that parameter. All right, so let's see, is the decal breaking loose? The other decals broke loose very quickly and this one is also, so we're good to go. Just lay down a little bit of water here to give me some wiggle room if I need to slide and adjust a little bit. Okay, so now we'll just lay this up here. Just a, a, a loose fit, just to get it off the paper and then we'll do our adjustment from there. Oh, that's gonna look slick. That's gonna look awesome. Wow, that looks really good on the white. All right, let me just do a quick measurement and see where we line up. Okay, we need to go to the right. Things aren't sticking too much here. I definitely don't want to tear. I can get some more water under there. There we go. Broke it. Broke it loose. There we go. Slide this forward about an inch. Okay. Let's see how that lines up now. About a quarter more inch more to the right right there. I'm going to call that good. Now I want to look down the length of the tube and make sure it's lined up between the two fins. And wow, could it really be that precise? I don't really want to adjust it. I think it's it's spot on. Okay, let me get a Q-tip and just start pushing some of this water out. Both directions. bit of a fold up. I know it's hard to see. Let me put this back. It, it rolled up on me just a little bit here. Let me get some more water. Sorry, my. I, I realize my head's probably blocking the shot, but I got to get this part unfolded. back to that. Let me get the rest of the rocket or the decal laid down. And a Q-tip may not be the best thing for this big a uh, surface. I may uh, want to resort to just using uh, a paper towel. Okay, I got to be very precise with this because I want to lift this corner and get it unfolded. without cutting. Okay. 
Okay, that, that just created a bunch of wrinkles is what that did. That's not what I was looking for as a result. So let me work out some of these wrinkles. I'm thinking for the water slide decals, that's a great method for small decals, but larger ones, ah, I, I think sticky back might be better for large ones because there's just too much opportunity for stretching and wrinkles. Okay, the, the back end of the decal is good. The front end, I do have just a bit of stretching, which is causing a bit of a wrinkle. And you can feel it right in there. So with my... I do have a bit of uh, that decal set solution. So I'm gonna hit this with that and try to smooth out some of those wrinkles. So uh, I'm going to stop the video and just go get some of that solution, put it on these wrinkles and work them out. But for, the, for all intents and purposes, that is it for this, uh, this portion of the video. And uh, we'll come back when I start gluing in the body couplers, the twist coupler. I've got to glue these in, but I'm going to do that after the clear coat. So I'll go over the clear coat and all that in the next segment. Okay, so off camera, I finished the clear coat on all the painted parts. So that is over and done with. So the next step is now to glue the coupler into the body tubes. Now there's two couplers, a female and a male. <clears throat> the female goes on the bottom portion, the male goes on the top, and I've already roughed this up with some sandpaper so the epoxy will stick better to the plastic as it once the glue, you know, is slid into the body tube. One other thing you'll notice here is it's got these two little indented ribs, these little rings that are go in on the plastic. And what that does is as we push the tube in with the epoxy, the epoxy hopefully will build up in that little lip there and will give it some additional purchase power. And just to show you how this works, if you see the on the female end, there's a little notch here and a little notch there. And the male end has these little nubs. And those simply, lock into those little grooves, slide in, and then you twist it, and it locks. You know, it's not gonna pull apart. And it's very minimal, I mean, what is that? An eighth of an inch at most? But that's really all there is to it. This is gonna glue into the upper portion of the tube, the male part. Now, before I glue this in, and you're gonna probably think this is overkill, and it probably is, but I tied a little lead weight to my Kevlar cord so that I can you know pull it back out but once I drop the weight in if there's if a loop is developed and this falls back through just to prevent a knot from being tied in the cord I'm gonna take a small piece of PVC pipe run that through there and what I'll do that'll do is it'll keep the cord straight and won't allow it to create any loops in it so we won't get any uh, knots. So I also need to, now Now that I've dropped the pipe into the tube, I need to drop the lead weight. I'm gonna take this off camera just for a second so I can let gravity feed it in. There, I'm just gonna let it go. There, you probably heard it more than saw it. But now the uh, the weight is down in there as well. All right, so now I'm gonna take some 30 minute epoxy. And mix this up evenly. And once I finish with this, I'm gonna do the same thing on one of the upper tubes with the, the male portion of the coupler. Draw two even lines of epoxy. 
hardener and the resin. Okay, set those aside. And just a little mixing stick and thoroughly, can't emphasize that word enough, thoroughly get this mixed up nice and even. Now when you apply the epoxy, you want to apply it on the inside of the body tube. That way as you slide the coupler in, it will force any extra epoxy down the tube as opposed to putting the epoxy on the coupler and then putting in and then what that would do is actually push it out the coupler and it's going to make a mess of the body tube and, and everything around. So we want the <clears throat> mess on the inside of the cardboard tube. And we don't need to run the epoxy all the way down the whole length of the coupler because the coupler itself is going to push the epoxy down with it. And we're also going to give a little twisting motion to the coupler as we slide it into the cardboard. Okay, so that is about as thorough as I'm going to be able to get it. Now to make putting it on a little bit easier, I'm not going to put it on with this stick. I've got a popsicle stick that I think will spread a little bit easier. Okay, so again, this is going to be applied to the inside of the tube, not the coupler. You definitely want to get it all the way up to the lip to get full coverage. This is definitely not a part you want come loose because that would spell disaster for the uh, the recovery of the rocket so there nice even coat all the way around okay now I'm going to take my female end of the coupler just kind of wipe off any dust that may have accumulated on it insert it and again just kind of twist as you go Just like that. That's really all there is to it. Okay? So now we're gonna do the same thing with the upper tube. Okay. Now the next step, we've got all the couplers glued in, is I'm going to glue this coupler in that's become our bulkhead for the nose cone. This is gonna glue into the very upper portion of the body tube. This will glue in a half inch and then the other upper tube will slide onto this. This has got the, the coupler end on this end, but when the ejection charge goes off, it's going to blow this upper portion off that's gonna have the nose cone attached to the top. So the next step is literally just gluing this in, and I've already marked a little nick mark there at the half inch line. That's gonna give us a full inch that's going to be able to insert into the upper body tube. Um, not the uppermost one, but the second to top. So now that we got that in, and I've got that tube ready to go because I'm gonna use it for alignment once I get this one glued in. But pretty straightforward process as, you, as you've seen before. And it's not gonna take a lot of glue because I'm only running a half inch of the coupler in. So I'm just gonna run the glue And when you do this, make sure you're gluing it to the right end of the body tube. Because the other end, I've already got the holes pre-drilled for the altimeter. So we definitely don't want to glue it on that end. And then make sure, like I always say, run it all the way up to the, the lip. OK. 
okay? And there's a little bit extra in there, which is good because that's gonna give us some lubrication so when I slide the upper tube in for alignment, we've got a little bit of leeway. So now I'm just gonna slide that in. Rotate up to that line. Let it sit for a second. Just to kind of hold, because I don't want it moving while I slide this one on. In fact, let me say it. Yeah, it's already starting to grip it pretty good. So now I can safely slide this one on. Now I don't have to put this one on all the way because I don't want to prevent it being glued. And then I'm just gonna do a little roll test. Kind of roll it, roll them together on the table. Kind of do an eyeball check. Make sure everything looks good as I'm rotating it. Pull it out just a little bit more, so I definitely don't want to risk it gluing to that tube. Okay, now the hard part, waiting. <laughs> so I'm just gonna set that right there, let it dry, and then the actual construction is done, then we can start hooking up shock cords uh, and all the, the mounts for the parachute and everything else that we're gonna do for the rocket. So we are just about there. Okay, this is gonna be the final segment in the building of the Mean Machine. And <laughs> as you can imagine, fitting it all in the camera is gonna be quite the challenge to show you the final product. But let me just do a quick pan by here and, uh, and then I'll break it down and show you what I've done internally. So of course, starting at the back, we've got uh, all four fins and the launch lug, got the motor mount back there. And then moving forward, there's the other launch lug. Then we've got the main logo mean machine and then there's our transition piece from the what I call the lower half to the upper half and I'll come back to that in a second then we've got the joint here at this coupler where the breakaway nose is actually going to be at and then we've got the true nose cone which is way up here now let me show you the nose cone first it's a simple one piece and that's of course where you can put the electronics but what i plan on doing is mounting the astro cam and when i do i'm going to use the astro cam tape to help seal this up and keep this intact and also get the weight of the camera as far forward as i can so that's my plan for that then moving up to the second stage here this is our breakaway piece and as you can see i've already got the shock cord mounted and all is well there let me tuck this back in. So this will be the actual piece that pops off during the ejection charge. And then moving back to this transition piece, this is the, the screw lock one where you unclick it and then simply open it up. And there you can see I've got some Kevlar, I've got some elastic, but that's all my shock cord in there. And they're all tied together as well. So that'll make transportation a lot simpler. And then, uh, just line those little lugs back up, insert and twist, and we're secure. So that is the completed mean machine. Uh, thank you for watching the whole series. It's been quite the build. I hope you learned something, and I know I did, uh, trying new things and different techniques. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, give me some ideas if you have any ideas that maybe I could utilize, utilize in the next build or for someone else who's aspiring to build one. Um, nobody knows it all, so please share your your knowledge and with that I'm going to end the video with a final photograph here of the me machine put together standing over what is it six feet tall it's 79 inches which is six feet seven I believe so yeah that's it's quite the rocket so here it is and uh, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll get to see this in a flight video here shortly take care God bless bye bye